you the one spending all the money. All right, y'all. I've been coming on here looking crazy because I'm keeping it real. And um, today's video, y'all, the message just came to me. What you do and how you act after you receive the blessings and manifestations. If you go to the first videos I've ever posted on this channel, I talk about how I received my manifestations and my blessings and how I was able to manifest them. Y'all, what you do and how you act after you receive the manifestations and the blessings will set the tone for how it goes moving forward within the manifestations and the blessings and whether or not you'll be able to keep maintain sustain and continue to elevate them let's talk about it so when you i'm gonna take my hair down with y'all and we're gonna talk about this i'm getting my hair done soon y'all and another and just a side note if you're young and you get into the bag or you saving your money so that you can do something buy a car get a home move out whatever um, it's very important. I don't know why my skin looks crazy on camera right now because it does not look like that in person. That's getting my nerves. Hold on. Well, anyways, so like my skin is looking way more, way, way more terrible on camera than it actually does in real life. But it is what it is. So I'm gonna take my hair down. Y'all don't mind this little part. The braid decided to come up before it was time. But I'm gonna take my hair down with y'all and show. And so we're gonna chit chat about this while I do this. Because, y'all, I worked so hard to get the apartment downtown, right? Downtown Detroit, I saved up all my money from working in the salon. You got to go watch my first two videos on the channel to know what I'm talking about. But I was working in, long story short, I was working in a salon that was sucky management. The energy was nasty. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. So, first of all, y'all, can I just comment on the fact that I cut my hair probably up to here like in October let's do a link check so it's just about back shoulder length if not longer it's still in a braid so probably it's a little bit longer but anyways when I first moved downtown like I did everything like I said I was working in that salon I saved the security deposit and y'all the rent at that apartment was $16.25 and then once I ended up getting a car I had to pay for a parking space that was additional $150 to the rent a month and there was no taking it off so I saved up a lot of money to move in because I needed a first and last month's rent basically I needed a security deposit of the rent of the total amount in rent and then I had to pay the pro rate and then um yeah so I it was close to like, it was between two and $3,000 that I saved up working at this hair salon. And um, yeah, like I think I used like some payday loans to even move in y'all to get part of the payment. And y'all, yeah, like that's how I ended up saving up money to move in there. Um, and working my ass off at that salon, like literally sleeping on a twin air bed on the floor and working at the salon um that and that's what i did to make money like that's what i did to be able to save the money to move in there my credit score was decent and i just made it happen so i um but the thing is even though i saved up and did all that hard work to get there once i got there that is the part that you still have that you have to pray for the, the ability the discipline and the knowledge to be able to maintain sustain and to continue to elevate your circumstances because once i got in the apartment the reason i even ended up doing airbnb was because i couldn't afford the damn rent y'all was it yeah, stopped working at the hair salon and i you know i was a hairstylist so at the end of the day it was money to be made all i had to do well, all I started doing was posting a lot on social media. I started putting myself in spaces for the money to come through. So I posted myself on like platforms to get booked um, where people go to book, you know, just stylists and stuff. And that's how I end up finding a lot of my clients or they end up finding me rather is through these uh, booking sites where I would list myself as a hairstylist and show my work and, you know, post my social media up there, my uh, business social media. That's where a lot of my clients end up coming from. Uh, literally, I think like, 
especially my high ticket ones. That's where they were coming from. So yeah, I ended up doing that and I ended up doing Airbnb because y'all, I couldn't pay my damn rent. Like at the time I was like, um, $2,000, almost $2,000 a month and I had no car. So even if I was working at a salon or had a little job somewhere, I would have to figure out how I was going to get there. Now at the time, I was full entrepreneurial mode. I was not thinking about going to work a nine to five. I was not thinking about go get a job up the street and be a server for a little. No, I was not thinking that. I never applied. I don't think I applied for one job while I was living there because I just knew God was going to make a way. And guess what? Airbnb came to me. And before I did that, when I first started staying there, I was doing hair out of my house. Like I was accumulating my hair business. I was creating my promo every day. I was promoting myself. I was using all the content that I made in the salon. I started releasing it when I left the salon, which was the perfect idea because I had all the content I needed to start to gain traction to get new clients. So before I ran out of content with the, uh, with the old content that I had already created, I had already had new clients coming in by then. So God was really looking out for you. But yeah, so I was killing the game in my head. Like, so I started doing hair out of my house and started beginning getting the money to do what I needed. As soon as I got a car, I started doing DoorDash. So I was doing, every, so I was doing DoorDash as a side hustle, doing hair um, as a main hustle, refused to go get a nine to five. I was trying to figure out how I was going to continue to pay my rent without killing myself by um working so much like you know I was doing DoorDash at night and as soon as I got done doing hair like and it wasn't always safe to do it at night like I would feel sometimes because you know you live in I mean I was downtown Detroit so at the end of the day you know you go to the left you in the burbs you go to the right you deeper in the hood and so it was just like okay you know at night I couldn't really risk it too much but I was doing what I could when I can what I could what I could whatever y'all know what I'm trying to say so I was doing that and um they my arm starting to hurt <laughs> where my man is like you do my hair y'all too bad I'm single but hey take all my hair for me baby but anyways what so I'm doing in the beginning and it worked for a while right I'm doing DoorDash I'm making money um and then get, God kept bringing it to me that's what I was coming back to this is the point I was coming back to y'all I almost forgot but this is the point I was coming back to when I moved in she was uh she does she was one of the first clients who was just telling me like you should Airbnb this place and then I started thinking to myself like I should Airbnb like I was telling her that I was thinking about Airbnb and she was like you should because it would do so well on Airbnb and I'm thinking to myself like hmm like do I really want to be an Airbnb host like do I you know what I'm saying I didn't really know dwelling on it for a while but that was up on Airbnb so I literally went through the house started taking uh after it was cleaned up started taking pictures um of the space and um yeah posted up on airbnb and within 24 hours of posting up on airbnb if y'all seen my first video i explained all this um i ended up getting a booking right and that booking ended up being started as a week long booking uh going all the way to a month they end up saying a month they kept extending so they end up saying a whole month until that's how i ended up getting into airbnb and right so this this is me figuring out how I'm going to pay my bills and maintain and sustain this place. So now when I started Airbnb, it no longer became my place. It was a business space. My number point. one mistake being an entrepreneur, like financially and just the way I went about it. I went back to my mom's house in the name of saving money, right? In the name of saving money. What happens is if God delivers you from a space and a place and you go back, you put yourself back in the cycle. You put yourself back in the cycle. So when I went back to my mom's house, I put myself back in the cycle. And y'all, that was not the last time I put myself back in that cycle because at the time I didn't know that I was in a cycle. Now, in retrospect, I can say I was in a cycle. But now moving forward, I finally just, I'm not gonna say I finally just realized, I probably realized the cycle after coming back, after being back and then coming back again up until my short-term rental was done. And then it took probably like, I would say another year 
probably like last year is when I realized I was in a cycle and I was in and I had things that I need to heal from by just going back to what was comfortable, going back to what was familiar, going back to places and spaces that weren't necessarily meant for me to actually grow and elevate. God delivered me from that space. So for me to go back, put me back in the cycle. And my plan was when I did Airbnb, I already had a plan for what I was gonna do when guests were staying. I was like, okay, when guests are staying, I'm gonna go out of town and I'm going to explore and do this and that. And I'm gonna, and I'm supposed to be, you know, at this point going on tour doing hair and just, you know what I'm saying? Finding somewhere else to stay other than going back to my mom's house. I wasn't supposed to be going back to my mom's house. But then I started thinking, well, I'm gonna spend so much money trying to do that, trying to do Airbnbs and like, you know, myself doing Airbnbs and short term rentals uh, out of state. My mom's house, I could go back to for free. So, you know, it was that comfortability. It was that, and sometimes what don't cost, cost. Remember that sometimes what don't cost money, cost in energy, cost in elevation, cost in delays, cost in um, just ending up back in the cycle, cost in, you know, reversing, right? Or taking some steps back. Like, so I ended up staying there, right? And at the time I'm still doing DoorDash. I'm still doing hair, mobile. Now I got my car, so I'm doing hair. Um, I'm DoorDashing. And I'm doing everything I every kind of hustle I can do in my car. Um, mobile hairstyles, uh, you know, traveling to clients' house, doing their hair, and I'm doing DoorDash when I wasn't doing that, right? To make extra money on the side, besides me just doing Airbnb and that covering the bills at the apartment, which was barely because what happened was this is how you lose the I'm not gonna say this is how you lose the blessings, but this is how you start making the blessings difficult once God gives them to you. That's why you gotta pray over being able to maintain and sustain what God has blessed you with because in the knowledge and wisdom and discipline to keep it, maintain it, sustain it, and continue to elevate it. Because what happened was the shadow effects of rolling around or whatever, right? And I was like well, I need to change the bed. I need to buy new bed sheets every time it's a new guest. Y'all know buying new bed sets is not cheap. Like, especially when you want decent ones. You know what I'm saying? I'm a hedge. I mean, I had these cornrows in a little long. Probably like a week, though, honestly. I think I've had these in a week. But I've just been throwing a bonnet on those scarves. So that's why they frizzy like they are. But anyways. So... I so yeah so I started buying new comforters and eating out and spending the money I started spending the money as just as fast as it was coming in it was going out and I was like not even realizing what I was doing before the bills started coming and getting over top of me and the overhead expenses of the business was getting over top of me and before I knew it I'm like okay how am I making this much on Airbnb and I'm making the rent on Airbnb alone. And everything else with the side hustles and everything, I'm combining all the money and somehow still ending up not making the cut. And then once I got my car, like I said, they made me put it on the lease permanently, month by month, an extra $150. So basically my rent went up $150 extra. So I'm paying almost $2,000 a month to live here and airbnb is covering most of it because it was you know I, I fixed my place up real cute i always had good great customer service my all my reviews were great i was a super host so you know of course people were coming and staying and i didn't have a problem occupying getting the space occupied um i was even cleaning my airbnb in the beginning to save money but i was spending money on what to filling up the space and being out and you know even traveling 30 minutes from downtown to my mom's house was problematic because I'm using all this gas to go back and forth to the Airbnb every couple days or just go downtown every couple days when turning over the apartment and doing all this stuff so that's putting wear and tear on my car I'm getting oil changes uh every two months every month and a half I'm putting gas in my car all the time you know filling it up because I'm going 30 minutes uh there and back that's an hour you know that's putting mileage that's putting you it was wearing tan on the car so 
just me doing all this driving back and forth, driving around. And then I was doing DoorDash. So drive all this driving around and just doing all this stuff. It was eating up the funds of what I was making. And so eventually what I was making wasn't, su wasn't sufficient enough to cover my expenses before I even knew it. So, you know, I'm like, I'm making money. So I'm good. I'm making money. I'm good. You know, you know, think it out, think it, I got it all together. Cause I'm making money. Cause I see it still coming in. I see the deposit still coming in. I see the passive income still coming in from Airbnb. And because eventually I was able to make the money where I was able to hire cleaners and it wasn't going to cut the pockets too deep, but the bills and expenses started getting on top of me because I was mismanaging the money. I didn't know, um, I didn't have the money. Okay, it's one thing to have good money management skills for your own personal life. It's a whole other thing to have it for your own personal life and a business at the same time. And I was working on both at the same time. So it was just like, yeah, the expenses started getting on top of me. And next thing I knew, I was I was behind on my bills. All of them. And this is the shadow effect of that, that you guys see me crying in my last video because the shadow effect was that when you get so behind on your bills, you gonna be playing catch up until you become mustard. <laughs> Little joke. But anyway, but yeah, you gonna become, you gonna be catch, you gonna be playing catch up until you can get yourself all caught up and place yourself back in a clear, a good and clear position. And so that's where I'm at now, placing myself in a good and clear position. But yeah, when I moved downtown, y'all, it was all good in the hood after I manifested and moved downtown. It was all beautiful and great. And that's why I said it don't matter about somebody giving you $10,000 today. If you have no money management, it's going to be gone tomorrow. It's going to be gone by next week for sure. Next month, yeah. Before the new year, for sure, because you're going to have spent that you know, you got used to do clothes. You probably bought a new car. You know, even if it's used off the lot, note, whatever. Yeah. Because when you don't have money management skills, you do things, you know what I'm saying, that get ahead of you. But I show myself a lot of compassion and grace for that time because, damn, girl, you was doing the damn thing. You was a fucking business owner. You was killing the game. Wasn't nobody my age doing what I was doing. I don't care. I was the best out doing it and there's nothing you could tell me different because I was killing the game. I was killing the hair game, killing the Airbnb game, doing a damn thing and making it look good on top when underlying there was shit going on. But shit, I was doing a damn thing. OK, um, but yeah, I made my mistakes and I bumped my head for sure, for sure. And I'm still paying for a lot of those mistakes. Now, thank God a lot of the. Like the apartment, that situation was able to be blessed and taken care of. Um, I had a lot of help as far as like getting uh, getting everything caught up with them and being able to end the short-term rental and ending the lease there and ending the short-term rentals there on a positive note and everything was taken care of good and clear. <sighs> no eviction, no nothing crazy. Thank you, God. That because situation worked out so well. Like God really showed up and showed out for on my behalf and on that one, y'all. Whew. But at the end of the day, it was a very hard lesson learned as far as like money management. And just because when you become aware of it is not when you necessarily integrate the lesson. So excuse me. Even though I was aware of it. I wasn't necessarily, even though I was aware of it, I wasn't necessarily um, ready to integrate the lesson because I, like I said, I ended up back in the same cycle, going to my mom's house and trying to go back to what God delivered me from, what I prayed for and cried for. It's even happening right now. Like I prayed and cried like, okay, God, you know, you just give me a way out. I'm going, I'm going to do what you say. You give me the resources. You give me the money. I'm going to go. I'm going to just walk in my faith and go. Soon as shit got hard, where I come back to. And that's when I said, that's when I integrated the lesson. Now, this is what y'all seeing. Y'all seeing the integration of the lessons. Because it's one thing to be aware that the lesson exists. And that you're doing the same sh over and over again. And you getting the same results. It's one thing to be aware of it. It's a whole nother thing when you're ready to integrate and do something different, okay? So this is me doing something different. Because it's like regardless of, you know, all the fears and all the woulda, coulda, shouldas and 
maybe baby haby what could be happening right now or what could go wrong whatever i'm rebuking all of that and i'm having faith that god is gonna see me through everything i'm going through and i'm gonna be delivered and i'm gonna come out on the other end triumphant i have faith in that one honey because when you start showing god that you will do the faith walk you're going to trust God and you're going to do the faith walk and surrender and do what he told you to do. Even if you can't see how it's going to work out, even if you can't see how it's going to play out, even if you don't know how it's going to work out and you don't know how the money going to get made and you don't know where you're going to be staying at and you don't know who going to support you and you don't know how you're going to make all this happen and you don't know all these don't knows and maybes and way. Yeah, you can drive yourself crazy with that or you can just have faith and walk in it. And I'm choosing to have faith and just walk in it that's where i'm at with it and that's what i did when i moved downtown right but when i moved downtown i stopped listening like everything i had done to get there manifesting talking to god about every single move every which way when the money started coming in pick up the request line god on the line god was calling me and i was like mm, ski i'm on the streets like <laughs> <laughs> not literally but basically like I was out in the streets but I was working hard doing other stuff but I wasn't really asking God like I wasn't talking to God how I was talking to God before I moved in there I wasn't being obedient and surrendering to the plan how I was before I moved in there once I moved in and the money started flowing in I started doing what I thought what I thought I should be doing with the money instead of consulting God first because God really was the financial consultant because when you don't got no guidance and you don't know you go to God about it um when you don't got no guidance and you don't know something go to God about it and so I thought I knew and I thought and I didn't want nobody in my pockets because you know you can't always trust family you can't always trust who wants to be in your pockets so I thought I could do it on my own and I tried to do it on my own and I ended up hitting my head really fucking hard <laughs> when I tried to do that because I ended up, you know, like I said, letting the expenses get over top of me, letting the bills get over top of me, bills passed through, stuff was going on and I was looking like, well shit, as long as I can still go do mobile hairstyles, be a mobile hairstylist and DoorDash and, and do all these other side hustles and the Airbnb money still coming in. Somehow, some way these bills going to get paid off. So I'll be all right. But you have to plan because if you don't plan, you plan to fail. And something else that just came to me after I'm looking at this video, editing it, is that I was busy doing all of that, DoorDashing, doing hair, doing this and that. I was doing all this busy work and all these things um that i thought was going to help me maintain and sustain instead of doing what god told me to do in the first place and led me to do because once i got into the space he had already gave me like i had wrote everything down of what i was going to do once i got into the space how I was going to maintain and sustain the things that I wanted to do, all of that. Me and God had already had that conversation. And I had this notebook that had everything written down in it from A to B, like the numbers, what I need to do, what I need to be working on once I was in the space. And instead of doing that, I will admit, instead of doing that, I did end up doing Airbnb and it did yield great results. And instead of doing and working on that project, of my purpose which is what i'm doing now which y'all seeing right now this is what god told me to do then and i didn't do it then either i didn't trust that it would yield the results that i needed as fast as the bills was accumulating i was like god i ain't about to sit there and record no youtube video i can't sit still right now and do that and i can't wait for the followers the subscribers and all that stuff to come through for it to start yielding the results that would make sense but I was so distracted with the busy work and being busy that I didn't even answer the message and the call when he called me because I was so busy and distracted with what I thought I should be doing that would yield the instant gratification and the instant results, you know, five, ten dollars a order on DoorDash, $200 at least a hundred dollars a head doing hair even though my back was hurting and i was tired all these things i was just draining myself to make it happen because that's what i thought i had to do 
instead of doing what God had already called me to do, which was this. That just came to me. But trusting and having faith in that be crazy and scary sometimes because it takes that faith walk ain't, ain't, ain't for the weak. Because that faith walk be having you walking through a dark alley and you can see is on the side with the, you get what I'm saying? And you looking like, oh no, guys, you want me to walk through that? that as I walk through the valley of the shadow, emphasis on shadow of death, but you still walking. If you don't walk through it, you ain't going to get to the other side. And even if the weapon form, it ain't going to prosper. Okay. Your girl had to pull some scriptures on y'all real quick. <laughs> And you only suffer. You'll hear me say this time and time again. You only suffer when you're disobedient. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Suffering happens when you try to hold on or you try to do the opposite or you try to do whatever you think you should be doing when God already gave you an answer. And you say, oh, no, your answer sound cool, but it sound crazy. So I'm about to just go do what I want to do and what I think is going to actually work. That's when you start suffering. Because you should have just did what he told you to do. Because if he called you there, you better, may, you better be am sure that he made space for you, funds for you, and a place for you to maintain, sustain, and elevate and grow within that spot and space if he called you there. And when I was doing DoorDash, I was DoorDashing, like when I wasn't doing hair, right? Because... Once, if it was a day where I did hair, I might still go out and DoorDash. When I was DoorDashing and doing hair and doing Airbnb, I would clean the unit myself in between guests. And sometimes that was one three day stay to the next three day stay. I've even had one per a person stay one night and had to clean it for a three day stay the next morning because somebody was checking in at 11. Like, or not, somebody was checking in at three or four and somebody was checking out at 11 and I had to do the, do the cleaning myself. I did all the cleanings myself. So in between, that's why I was doing so much running around in my car and that's why my car was getting wear, wear and tear on it. It got to the point where I couldn't even sit still. Like when I was sitting still, I'm like, no, there's money to be made, there's stuff I need to do, da, 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 da. Like instead of sitting in God's stillness and in God's silence and letting God speak to me and taking everything I was worried about to God and seeing how God wanted me to handle it, I was just doing all this busy work and yeah, it was making me money, but it was draining me out to the point that I ended up sideswiping that car because I dozed off at the wheel because I was so malnourished and exhausted. <laughs> Long story short, like I had an extreme iron deficiency because at the time, around the same time I ended up going vegan and I had extreme iron deficiency and I was having chronic fatigue spells and I was trying to do door dashing at night one night and I literally turned the corner three houses from the corner sideswiped my car y'all it was like nine o'clock at night it wasn't even super late but that was because i was literally draining myself out to zero and after that i had to literally stop doing doordash and stop doing so much busy work to focus in on what god wanted me to do because and when god wants you to sit down he'll sit you down because after i sideswiped my car it was a uh, thank god my mechanic was able to fix it fairly quick and just like nail the little thing together. I was able to talk to the miss whose car got sideswiped. She had insurance. Unfortunately, she had just got her car sideswiped on that exact same street like three weeks before that. And she had just got it back. Um, So I don't know what was been going on on that street. But unfortunately, that's what had happened. And all that had to happen for me to sit down and actually talk to God because God wanted my attention. And I was so busy that I couldn't. And wasn't giving God my attention. So yeah. Ahead of you. Things got on top of you. So this is how I ended up manifesting the blessing. And exactly what I wanted. Exactly what I. Y'all heard me say it in the first couple videos. And it was exactly what I wanted. Exactly how I wanted it. Right. Before I knew them, ever, before I knew them elevators wasn't working. And at night it was a whole bunch of bums running around. Okay. Um. Man, I know you didn't allow this to manifest into my life and give me what I exactly what I wanted and bless me with it. And one, you know what I'm saying? You know, not allow, you know, not not allow me to be able to keep it. I know that's not what you did, guy. God looking at me like you the one spending all the money that I'm giving you. And then I started doing the numbers. And I'm looking like, okay, you're making the rent money every month to be able to pay your rent on time. 
where the hell is the rent money at when it's time to pay? Where is the bill money at in general when it's time to pay? Like you're making the money, but the money is going somewhere and it's getting spent. Otherwise, next thing I know, this is why it's important to know a little bit more about finances and reviewing reviewing your transactions so that you know what they you spending your money on and where it didn't went because that's what was happening i was like where all this money go like i was making all this money i'm making three thousand plus a month in passive income from airbnb like what you know where where is all the money at like this is more than enough to pay the rent i was eating out I was going out of town. I was um, buying new beds. I was hiring help. I was doing this, doing that. Like, and for a long time, I was doing all the cleanings myself. The only time I would really hire cleaners is when I had hair appointments and I couldn't clean the unit myself. That's when I would hire cleaners and pay them. And it wasn't even super expensive. Like that was an expense that my business probably could have sustained and maintained successfully had I managed the money correctly all, all in all. Um, because I'm gonna tell you the exact moment, the exact moment I remember like it was yesterday because it came to pass so tough. The exact moment that I, um, ended up in the, in the same money cycle, ended up in the same cycle that I had been in for years was when I came back to my mom's house. I was sitting downstairs on the couch. So at the time I was sleeping on the couch. I'm sitting on the couch and I'm looking at the money coming in from Airbnb and I'm looking at the money I didn't make um, doing hair and I'm adding it all up like, okay, this is going to be able to pay the rent. It's going to be able to do this. Da, 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 boop, boop, boop. I was like, hmm, well, I see this booking coming in. This going to cover the other half of the rent. So I'm going to use this money that I got in the bank account already to go do what I want to do. And then I'm going to just hustle for the rest of the money backwards and wrong as backwards and wrong as okay <laughs> so now i was gonna save money that i could spend the money that i had in my account to do what i want because i seen the money coming in from airbnb never spend money before you get it first and foremost that was my number one mistake spending the money before i get it just because i seen the booking on there and the money was coming in don't mean i should have been trying to do what i was doing um, like I said, I forgive myself and I have a lot of compassion and grace for that version of me because baby, she didn't know no better. She was out here trying to figure it out. I was wearing biker shorts, Crocs, and crop tops every day. That was literally my everyday attire to the salon, to do hair. Uh, yeah. Unless I was going out, out, which if you follow me on Instagram, you, that's how I was looking when I was actually going out somewhere and doing something with people and being on social scene. But if I was working or I was, you know, on my hustle mode, it was biker shorts, a t-shirt and crop. I mean, a t-shirt or a crop top and Crocs, which was also, I'm going to say it, it was a little vibrational outfit. Um, I see that now, but it was just a young me. It was a young me thing. Like I was just being a young, young girl out here in the streets. And that's how I was presenting myself out here every day. So also how you present yourself is how is you know everything's an energy so now i present myself a lot different um i present myself in dress to impress because i'm here to impress myself um and don't talk about dressing to impress and how i've been showing up on youtube we getting there y'all i'm coming out of a very hard phase and that's the only reason why i've been looking like this because i've been showing up very authentic and transparent on youtube to to show y'all that i'm all the way no games authentic and transparent like I'm that's my best thing to do if you're young getting to the money and you uh are learning financial good financial management and financial habits i say first things first stop going to the nail salon stop going to get your hair did unless you can uh do a barter and trade system with the people that are doing your nails and hair and the reason i say that is because if you invest in all the external and decorating the vessel and your internal is not good and your internal is not um at its you know best spiritually mentally emotionally then physically you know what i'm saying you decorating trash that's how i'm gonna say it um and and i'm not coming for nobody because i've been there i've decorated the vessel and been tarnished on the inside before so 
but it's a lesson I've learned. And um, actually, the hood healer was one of the ones who said that decorating is some. She got some saying like about decorating the vessel um, while the soul is impure or something like that. Um, but not working on your soul or something like that. But it's true because when you do that, you're setting the tone for everything around you. So everything you see going to look pretty on the outside and be shitty on the inside. So that's why now the barter and trade system I have with my homegirl, Kayla, who does my hair. I do her hair. She does my hair. Whatever skill you got, offer it to the person that's doing your hair and see if they cool with doing that barter and trade system. That's also how y'all get about of uh, the rat race. If y'all do barter and trade, you get out the rat race because now monetary value has no value here because now it's skill to skill, person to person. Just the way, it's just one way to do it. Just one thing at a time to be able to step more into authenticity into that line of abundance because if you let in somebody that's talented and that you trust and got good energy exchange with you and you exchange exchange your good energy your talent and skills with them now y'all in a good barter and trade system okay so um y'all in a good energy exchange what creates more abundant great energy okay and so, i manifested this place and ended up struggling to keep it instead of elevating and maintaining and keeping it with ease struggling to keep it because I started being disobedient and I started not consulting God and my decisions that I was making especially financially and it ended up causing suffering to maintain the space and how it took everything in me to be able to maintain it because me mismanaging the resources and provisions and funds that God was giving me that got that that was that caused that suffering that caused that struggle or that the funds are on track to be to be there to pay all your bills on time because I started borrowing from that fund and thinking I could use that fund to do what I wanted to do and then hustling for the rest like I just told y'all that's the mistake I made when I was sitting down there on that couch and I thought about it and I decided to start spending that money out that funds, out that pot, out the bill pot and got caught up real quick because I did that. <laughs> so that's when I knew I entered into that cycle and that hard learning, that hard learning curve that God sent me through so that I would never do that again. And that got me here where I'm like, okay, now I know how to move money better. Now I know how to move with money better. And I won't say that I never did that again. Like I said, when I became aware of what was going on was not when I integrated the lesson. It probably took up until now for me to integrate the lesson. <laughs> okay, like this is me being completely transparent and real with y'all. It probably took up until now for me to integrate the lesson. So now that I've actually integrated that lesson, and I move with my finances way better and make sure the money is there when it needs to be there for me to pay what I need to pay and to have all the bills paid. Life is a lot less stressful in financially when I think about that. But I still had to, we're in the shadow phase of this decisions that I made way back then thinking I knew what I knew. And I was still accumulating uh, an increase in the bills at the time because I was going out doing stuff like getting new new this and the most upgraded this and getting a second phone and doing this different stuff at the time that I did not need to be doing until the finances were all the way in order. So those were learning curves that I had to go through so that now when I got to this point and guys, yeah, y'all, it was a hard learning curve, but it was very necessary because if I wouldn't have learned those lessons or even been aware that those cycles and lessons existed, I would have never been at the point to be so aware of them to be ready to integrate what I've learned so that I don't make those mistakes again. So yeah, that's what I came to tell y'all here about on today's video. Um, and pretty much right now, I'm making videos as I feel. Like as I feel the message come on, I turn the camera on. Um, my promise to myself is at least once a week. Something. So hopefully I'll learn something from my mistakes and take something that I've said in this video and, uh, and integrate it and apply it to your life in a way that allows you to not make the same financial mistakes that I did. Um, and if you are good with finances, um, 
drop some tips in the comments for for me and for other folks <laughs> but um <laughs> but yeah so um, as always love you guys if you made it this far in the video um this is gonna be our little secret code if you made it this far in the video and you watched the whole video put some purple hearts in the comments and tell me what is something someone has taught you about finances that you will never forget and has been very helpful um in your financial management skills um but as always I can pick up the phone to call me and I pick up the phone so I can call y'all all right so hopefully y'all answered this time and y'all made this far in the video I will see y'all next time love you bye mm -hmm.